K.I. was one of the most feared shooters in Chirac history, but many don't know that she once almost murked G. Herbo. Let's take a closer look at what happened. Jakira Barnes was a teenage girl who earned a reputation for being a feared gang member and respected shooter in the city of Chicago. She was exposed to gun violence at a young age when her father and brother were killed. She later moved to the Jarrell City neighborhood where she started getting cool with the GDs who lived there. One of those GDs was Tuka, who was from the STL EBT set and lived in the area. KI and Tuka formed a close relationship and she would start getting close with other dudes in the neighborhood from Jarrell City and STL EBT. So, when Tuka was killed in January 2011, KI was heartbroken. But this only made her turn up and go harder in the streets. Tuka was allegedly killed by the BDs in retaliation for the 2009 murder of a dude named Edric Walker. So, KI directed her rage at BD sets like 600 and Wick City, which would later become O Block. KI would later get revenge in August of 2011 after she and FBG Butta caught a BD named Odie Perry lacking while riding his bike. KI and Butta were out looking for ops because it was Tuka's birthday. They were near the 400 block of East 64th Street when they saw OD ride past on his bike. So they both started shooting at him. OD would be killed in the shooting and many have alleged that KI was the one who pulled the trigger. OD was a well-respected and high-ranking member of the BDs and it came as a shock to many that he had been killed by a girl. After OD was killed, the BDs in Wick City started going by the name O Block and vowed to get revenge on STL EBT who were now going by the name Tukaville. So. K.I. was the one who first sparked the beef between O Block and Tukaville, which continues to this day. After O.D.'s death, K.I. got addicted to the street life and became one of the most feared shooters in Chicago. It's even been rumored that she started training younger kids in the area on how to rob and do drills like her. One of those kids was her cousin, Taekwon Tyler. In 2012, Taekwon would be killed while attending a house party with his sister. During the party, there was a fight and shots ended up going off. Taekwon was killed by a stray bullet from another member of Jarl City named Nashawn Flowers, who was later sentenced to 55 years in jail for the murder. KI was also there that night and saw Taekwon get killed. After this murder, she changed her name on Twitter to Taekwon Assassin and started really getting reckless in the streets. In her bio, she also wrote hashtag Taekwon Assassin page shooter, which let the world know that she was now taking hits for cash. At one point, a user on the website 4chan even hacked KI's Twitter DMs and revealed that she was actually taking cash for hits. One of these messages seemed to suggest that she almost accepted $10,000 to take out G Herbo. The DM exchange shows a man whose face had been edited out holding a stack of money to his ear. KI asks him, when you coming with the paperwork? He replies, I'm finna be in the shy this weekend, we gonna link up, I'ma put money on all them So the person hiring the hit wasn't even from Chicago which is suspicious from the start. The conversation continues with KI saying, okay, cool, hit me up. I don't fuck around fam, know you heard about them twins. The dude responds by saying, hell yeah, y'all motherfuckers made O Block, took OD off the map. So clearly the dude ordering the hit knows about KI's reputation and can tell that she's serious about the hit. After that, KI gets a little sketched out and tells the dude to delete the DMs because the cops are onto her. He tells her it's all good and he'll hit her line when he's in the city. That's when KI drops the bombshell and says, 10K for Lil Herb up front. So KI was really agreeing to take out one of Chicago's most respected rappers for 10 grand. G Herbo, also known as Lil Herb, is a rapper from the South Shore neighborhood of Chicago. As a teenager, Herb became affiliated with the No Limit Muskegon Boys gang, who were made up of renegade sets of the GDs and Black Peace Stones. Herb and his childhood friend Lil Bibby were originally members of a renegade stone set called No Limit. They later formed an alliance with the renegade set of the GDs called the Muskegon Boys. Together, they formed NLMB, which stood for No Limit Muskegon Boys or Never Leave My Brothers Behind. So being made up of two renegade sets from larger, more powerful gangs in the city, NLMB was beefing with pretty much everybody. Their main ops were Lakeside, KTS, Black Mob, No Limit, Death Row, and many others. But they were not known to be for STL EBT. NLMB is based on the east side and STL is based on the south side so they never had any real reason to be. NLMB did have problems with Jarl City, which is maybe the reason why KI was willing to do the hit on G Herbo, but it doesn't explain who was behind the messages. Before blowing up as a rapper, Herb had a lot of enemies in the streets. His main beef was with a GD set called KTS, which had two popular rappers, KTS Vaughn and KTS Dre. The beef between NLMB and KTS goes way back to 2008 with the murder of a dude named Lil Pez. Lil Pez was affiliated with members of KTS and he was allegedly killed by a member of NLMB, so they've been at war ever since. The dude behind the hit may have been affiliated with one of Herb's ops, like KTS, but the fact that he said he was only going to be in the shy for the weekend 
makes it seem like he was from out of town. Plus, if he was gang affiliated, he should be able to do the hit himself. G Herbo and Lil Bibby first started to blow up in August 2012 with the track Kill Shit. The conversation between K.I. and his mystery man likely would have taken place right around the time that Herb was building a buzz in the music industry. So maybe the person that beefed with Herb for reasons that had nothing to do with the gang and decided to hit up one of Chicago's most famous shooters to handle the problem. Another popular theory is that the guy was just trolling, but K.I. was dead serious. Or maybe he was serious and just didn't have the 10 grand K.I. was charging. The hit clearly never took place because G. Herb was still alive. There are also a few other rumors to explain why K.I. never went through with the hit. Maybe K.I. got spooked and felt like the guy messaging her was working with the police. At that time, K.I. was well known by the Chicago PD and they had been trying to take her down ever since the murder of O.D. But she was smart with how she moved and they were never able to get enough evidence to convict her of any crimes. Maybe her instincts told her that this dude was going to get her caught up in the case and decided not to risk it. Another rumor is that the dude backed out after feeling like it may be a setup. K.I. was known to rob people. So, it wouldn't be surprising if she decided to convince this dude that she was going to do the hit for 10k, only to have the boys from STL waiting to take his cash and run. Or maybe the plan was still in motion when K.I. was killed. On April 10th, 2014, K.I. was on the way to a friend's house for lunch with FBG Butter and another friend, when a shooter in a gray hoodie came up and started letting off shots. K.I. had recently revealed her location on social media, which turned out to be a big mistake. Chief Keef's cousin Blood Money was recently murdered, and rumors were going around that K.I. was the shooter. So, when she revealed her location, the BDs decided to get revenge. K.I. was shot nine times in the neck, jaw, and chest, and was later pronounced dead at just 17 years old. The rumors are that it was a group from O-Block who planned the hit, and it was King Von who fired the kill shot. Chicago police later leaked paperwork that confirmed Von was the primary suspect in the investigation, but the DA refused to take the case due to lack of evidence. In just a few short years, K.I. earned a reputation as one of the most respected gang members in the city. She was so well known that random dudes from outside of the city were willing to pay her to perform hits on famous rappers. It's still not clear who wanted G Herbo dead. It's also not clear if K.I. would have just finessed the dude or would have actually taken out her. But it does prove how influential she was in the streets of Chicago and how deadly she was as well. Who knows what would have happened if K.I. actually went through with it and took out G Herbo. It may have caused a war between STL and NLMB, and fans would have never gotten the chance to see the rapper reach its full potential. Luckily, the murder plot never made it past the DMs, and Herb was able to make it out of the streets before he suffered the same fate as KI.